You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and girls, Anari here from Drake Wing Gaming. So you may on Twitter the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Tangled Stars. So y'all, as you know by now, I'm affiliate with Green Man Gaming. What that means there's going to be a link in the description. Y'all click that link, you get discounts on all the latest and greatest games. And I get commission based on whatever y'all buy. And also, my lovely girlfriend Elle is taking commissions. A couple of you have already commissioned her, and she's very, very happy. She's working on your pieces. And if anyone else wants to commission her, I've got her FA and Twitter info in the link. So anyway, y'all, let's jump right back into it. Sit back and enjoy, and let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. All right. <clears throat> Don't you get free food on your breaks? Yes, but only specific things. They're iffy with their budgets. A fair. A row of gauche paintings right next to the camera lenses and other camera things caught Alder's eye, and he led us into it. And he led us to it. Wow, I didn't know they sell these these kinds of things anymore. They all look the same to me, but I guess in a photographer's eye, it's a treasure. I'm just gonna go look around. All right. He looks back at me and flashes me a smile with a nod. Damn, he's cute. I try to I try to lose myself in the mass of artsy things around me, and honestly, it's not really doing it for me. Don't get me wrong, I don't hate it, but I just it just doesn't interest me. I mean, come on. On the wall to my right was a picture of a polygon man with a top hat. What do artists see in these things? There's some cutely designed notebooks around, though, spread within, spread within the mini sketchbooks. I see a cute little one that had a galaxy design on it with blue and white stars. <clears throat> Andy told me to get something nice for myself, so I might as well. I pick up the notebook and notice a little tag was attached to it. I read it out. It read out, Reach for the stars. Sweet. I smile and move along, inspecting the rest of the side of the store. At the back, there was a section full of floral patterns, floral sketchbooks, and three-dimensional prints of flowers. They varied from chamomile to lavender and even bushes of roses. They looked 3D printed, but a sign next to them informs you how they're handmade. I wish I had as much talent as some people do. Behind a particularly thin rose bush, I could see something yellow peeking through the gaps. Curiosity killed the, killed the Jonah, so I move the bush, careful, the bush carefully aside to discover a golden rose alone in a flower pot. A golden rose that shone all too familiar, all too similar to that other one. My chest tightens for a slight second, but I don't want this day to be ruined. Well, any more ruined than it already got. I turn around and walk back to where I remember leaving Alder, but to my surprise, he had left. Alder? I call out, but no response. He's tall, easily taller than the shelves, so I should be able to see a brown tuft of hair along with a pair of ears above them. Besides, he's a wolf. His hearing is razor sharp. I start to walk through the whole store from from selections of charcoal to, scra to scrapes used for painting. How the fuck do you paint with a scraper? Just as I was about to head for the exit to search for him outside, I see a tail with a red tip peeking from a faraway corner. I walk to him, creeping up, wanting to scare him. Before I jump from behind the aisle I was on, I can hear faint sniffling. Sad and hurt sniffling. And it didn't come from anywhere, nowhere but from Alder. He was slouched over, looking at something which he held, and it clearly upset him. I decided not to scare him anymore, but my presence known without startling him. Alder? Jonah! He spins to face me, and I caught a glimpse of what he had in his hands. It looked like a family of wolfkin. A mother, a father, and... A mother, a father, and a mo... A mother, a father, and a mother. Okay, so it has two mothers and a father. Either that used to be sister, or that used to, that's supposed to be brother. Before I could look at it more, he slid it behind him nonchalantly. He didn't wipe his tears away, hoping hoping I wouldn't notice. Honestly, I've never seen him cry, not once, and I've known him for nearly a, for nearly a year now, in which I spent most of my days around him. Alder, what's wrong? Seeing that his strategy clearly failed, he wipes his eyes quickly while giving me a fake laugh. Nothing, nothing, just allergic to chalk powder. I frown, not buying it. The chalk is on the other side of the store, and it's obvious bullshit, dude. He waves me off, but I can see more tears forming in his eyes. Let's just move on. I'm fine. A part of me wants to just leave him be, but a part of me wants to do something else. Show him that you care, huh, Andy? Does that mean showing him that I want to get to the bottom of this? Wouldn't that just make me seem annoying and pushy? But despite that, I still do something that I later will definitely see as stupid. I close the distance between us and hold his face in my hands, having to stand on my tiptoes to actually reach him relatively properly. I feel the fullness of his head in the palms of my hands, and his fluffy fur feels amazing. How I wish I could wake up to this feeling. Dude! I say firmly, shaking him for a second. If something's bothering you, I want to know it. You never talked to me about yourself. You always voided the topic, and now I find you here crying over a photo frame. 
I never saw you shed a tear in the past year, so what gives? I take a breath, realizing I'm getting a tad too angry, when I should be supportive. His eyes are wide, staring right into mine, but not moving an inch, not saying anything. Just, please. I nearly whisper, softening my expression that I didn't realize was more or less full of anger. Please, tell me if something's up. I want to know, and I want to help you, no matter what the thing is. I really care about you. It makes him flinch, and he slowly takes my hands off him. Alright, thanks, Jonah. His tears were gone, and he smiled instead. Who knows how long he was crying here. His face was red from it. Wanna go fi Wanna go find the others? I'm getting a bit hungry, and I need some fresh air. Yeah, alright, but tomorrow we're having a heart-to-heart. -heart. He chuckles again. So again, something I haven't seen before. Alright, whatever you say. Let's get going. We started to make our way out, but as we were leaving, I saw the picture frame again. A tiny wolf looked just like him. Oh, ooh, interesting. Yay, back to the Christmas Mall. We went to Maple first, as she was the closest one in terms of proximity, and, after looking for her in a maze of so many bright lights, we find the Red Panda immersed in a selection of little elf decorations. We accidentally startle her when we go over to her, and Alder got a punch in the stomach. After my laughing fit and threats from Maple, we agreed to go find Andy, then go over to a place to eat. And that we did. Ooh, oh! Ooh. That's so cool. I love fireplaces like this. God, it's gorgeous. How much happens during our meal, beside Alder being very surprised by Andy's choice of place and sharing what we did with our day? Turns out Maple bought, our, bought four bags worth of decorations while Andy bought two, on top of them an acoustic guitar, for some reason. Alder and I browsed some more while after we found Andy, and I went along with buying a bit too many clothes, and Alder got stuff for his camera, amongst other things. I hadn't even realized we were we were around for over three hours already, and it was already past 11 p.m. Plus, to drive home, we'll be back home at midnight. If you wouldn't have taken so long, Jonah, maybe we could have stayed more. We can always come back some other time. True, and I really hope we do. Maybe, but who knows? Our schedule is tight, though, so we'll see. Ten or so minutes later, we get our bill and split it evenly, getting ready to go. Well, it only makes sense to go back with who we came with, so I'm stealing Jonah again. Suit yourself. I'd always rather have Alder than you than you on a one-hour drive. I'm sorry, Jonah. It must be hard for you. What's that supposed to mean? I'm a great person to be around while driving. Is the excessive talking included? Don't even start about that, miss. I can't shut up about my stupid list. My list is smarter than your banana-colored head. Alder and I just look at each other and give a nervous smile, holding Andy by his hood while Alder was holding Maple by her head, something she, something she somehow didn't notice. We should really go. It's getting late. See you two around? Maple gives Andy one last dirty look and smiles bright at me. Sure, can't wait to hang out again. Drive safe, Jonah. Fuck you, Andy. <laughs> he waves at us as they walk off to Andy with Alder's car while Andy is left slack-jawed. The nerve! Come on, big guy. I'm getting tired, and you must be too. Driving while they got tired is dangerous, so we should go as soon as we can. Yeah, you're right. Let's get going. Alright, fade to black once more. On the drive back home, Andy sang even more winter songs, and I swear I was so close to punching him in the face. Too bad he was the one driving. He stops the car just for a minute in front of my house, not getting out, just saying our farewells with a cheery grin. He wait with a cheery grin, he waves and drives off. Not much conversation happening because of how tired we both were. I step in my room, dropping my bags next to the shoe rack, locking the door and flicking the light on. I step in my room, dropping my bags next to the shoe rack, locking the door and flicking the light on. <clears throat> I slip out of my shoes and jacket, placing them in the rightful places and going straight to the bathroom to wash my hands, face, and brush my teeth. <coughs> After that, my pajamas come on, come on comfortably, and I turn the heater higher, wanting a toastier night. I walk over to the fridge to grab a bottle of water to have by the bedside, and after I close the fridge, I notice something outside. The street lamps were on, so the snow was more or less visible, and I approached my window. In the snow, right outside my window, a symbol stared at me. A circle with the letter A sat in the middle of it, and a K sitting on top of it. Flipped to look like a crown. The bread runs cold and my bottle slips out of my hand. Thankfully, I hadn't opened it yet. I run to my door and, un and unlock it, opening it with more force than intended, looking outside, hoping to see who might have rode it. The streets were empty. Only thing being around was the chilly winter air, along with a few snowflakes entering my house. My breathing was frantic now, so I try to calm it down, looking more. Sadly, I still don't see anything. So, defeated, I return to my room after locking the door. Twice this time. Come on, Jonah, it could just be, it could just be a prank. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of kids and teenagers in this neighborhood, so they might have just wanted to do some sick joke. Yeah. I try to shit out those shut out those thoughts and snuggle close in my fluffy blanket. 
Today has been great. I won't dwell on that thing. I'd rather end the day on a good note. So I'll think about Alder and how I'll be seeing him tomorrow. <clears throat> Has he been chosen? Oh, slowly fade to black. Oh my. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, that's creepy as fuck. Ooh, what is that? Oof. Ooh. Creepy. <clears throat> that night I sleep nearly that night I sleep nearly like a newborn baby, still feeling extremely cozy in my house my new house. It still feels weird for me to say that that this house is mine. Regardless, the bright light from outside played the role of an alarm clock, though you visually waking me up in a soft manner. Because of how heavily it snowed this winter, everything is so much more white and bright, and you have no chance of falling asleep again if you wake up early. The reason clearly being the light being reflected off the snowy roads. Already children and adults were laughing and cheering outside, enjoying their day in company of a fluffy yet cold blanket. Ugh, I wish to be young again, without a worry, without a fear, just living life with a smile on my face. God, I'm getting old at the ripe age of 22. I throw the blanket off myself, the sweet warmth, the sweet warmth from its embrace dissipating along with what little fatigue hooked onto me. My feet touch the floor, and it's still, still odd to feel a warm carpet rather than a cold wooden floor. A nice odd, though. My pajamas were a bit oversized, but more like the size of Alder, but was comforting in a way. Heh, <laughs> it makes me think of something. It's dumb, sure, for me to think like some teenager, but borrowing a hoodie from him, that would clearly be too big for me, is something I hoped for. Borrowing it, then magically forgetting to bring it back. A hoodie that would smell of hibiscus, and him. I shake my head to rid myself of those childish thoughts. Come on, Jonah, you're an adult. Plus, he's straight. Y you know that. Get him with making coffee. Jeez. As soon as the machine whirs is to confirm the finish of my drink, a savory smell covers the entirety of the kitchen, caressing my nose with a flavor that reminds me only of a lazy, snowy morning. <clears throat> Just like the one I'm having right now. I quickly go through my routine in the bathroom while the coffee is cooling down, and after I was done, I threw on some nice clothes in my favorite cardigan. The mug awaited me patiently, and I remove it from its place, taking it, taking it with me to the little spot which I made for myself in the corner of the living room. It consisted of a coffee table, a few small bookshelves attached to the wall, a comfy chair, and it was all placed right underneath the window which overlooked the neighborhood. With a content sigh, I placed down my mug on the coffee's glass surface and tightened my gown before sitting down. Outside the window, two houses away, a mother was building a snowman along with her little son. Both of them were wearing big smiles upon their faces, beaming with light. It made me smile, too. It's the simple things in life that make people happy, and it's the most refreshing and beautiful sight to see. So glad I'm alive. My hand covered the handle of my mug, bringing it to my lips and taking a sip of the, f of the familiar taste, the familiar temperature and scent. There's something about coffee that brings me back to better days. It's, it makes me feel lighter and more calm. Pretty much the opposite of its intended purpose. I bring down the mug and smack my lips with satisfaction, sighing again. The child was now working on rolling a snowball around, hoping to make the last, pe last piece of his sculpture. <coughs> Once it was of a good enough size, with the help of his mother, he places it on. But it's... something's missing. Ah, there it is. The mother, the mother hands him two pebbles and a carrot, and without wasting a moment, he decorates his creation with excitement in every breath. Once it was done, he started to jump up and down, his mother opening her arms and bringing him into a close embrace. How precious. I wish I could remind, rewind to the days where I did the same with my mother, to the days where the only worry was not finding a scarf for a snowman named Bobby. It's a bittersweet memory, and what I want to relive... <clears throat> but life moves forward, and so should I. Minutes pass by as I pick up a book and I have been reading for the past days, a, ho a homeric text that dates back thousands of years. The satisfactory verses that rolled off your tongue, along with the perfect coffee which made the inside of my mouth spark with glee, made time fly by. I reached the bottom of my mug around the time I reached the 204th page of the book, which means I have read around 60 pages or so in the past hour. Not bad. I look out the window again, and now there's a woman and her child were gone, leaving the snowman to smile in front of their house. He didn't look lonely, <clears throat> even if he was alone. He was happy. I close the book and place it back where it belonged, and I take the mug with me, too, walking to the kitchen and washing it. After drying my hands, I fish out my phone from my pocket, and I was surprised to see nobody had texted me at all. I know I told Alder we'll meet later today, but honestly, I haven't even thought about the time, location, or any of that jazz. But that's something Jonah from the, from the near future can worry about. The current Jonah wants to go on a walk and enjoy the snow. 
With wind in my steps, I go to the door and put on my shoes, slipping on my jacket afterwards. I always loved winter just for this, wearing fluffy, big, warm jackets. I always felt as, as if you were being hugged from everywhere. <clears throat> the door opens and the winter morning breeze walks past me, entering my house like an expected guest. It was refreshing and it brushed off what was left of my sleep. I close and lock the door, testing it. I've always been afraid of the door not locking properly and somebody just robbing me. Sure, it's dumb, but it doesn't hurt to be safe. I take step after step in the fresh snow, which seemed a bit bigger than yesterday's. Although, differently, there was now a cleanly shaved path on the sidewalk in the street. The snow looked as if it had been pressed down into some carpet. Surely enough, it was slightly slippery, but at least you didn't have to walk through the snow that went above your ankles. I take a moment and let out a long breath. Really, excuse me, really taken in the moment. Not many are upright. Now, it's way too early for a winter holiday, but I love taking advantage of my free days and waking up early to live them to the fullest. The neighborhood was silent for now as kids are going to overflow it in three hours or so. It's a massive open circle in the middle, so the whole area made it easy for neighbors and kids to join in activities and games. A few nights ago, I sat on my doormat while sipping some tea and just watching the mass of people enjoy their time. It made me unbelievably happy. Oh, and speaking of tea, I can't believe Alder made me like tea. Especially herbal tea, one which I hated with a passion. I put my hands in my pockets and set off on a sidewalk, not paying much mind to which direction I was heading. If I get lost, I can look up on my phone which way I need to go back. <clears throat> I always loved going on walks, but never really had the time. They've always helped me sort of, uh, I've always helped me sort my thoughts or simply calm me down. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks for a tip if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.